Hello everyone and welcome to our brand new series City or Suburb Names and Their Origin. In this video, I'll be talking about how and why Whitefield got its name. Most people think Whitefield is by IT, of IT and for IT. Also as a slice of an American suburb recreated here for a bunch of software guys to feel at home. But did you know Whitefield has a history way longer than Silicon Valley? Yes, there's something utterly charming about this quiet neighborhood. For a person who has grown up in Bengaluru during the 80s and 90s, Whitefield was a place quite far away from the city with many farmhouses, open spaces, charming hills and empty roads. These members might very much reflect the majesty of a bygone era of Whitefield. But none could imagine its metamorphosis from a sleepy settlement to one of the plushest addresses in Namma Bengaluru. So, how did Whitefield get its name or come into existence? Let's turn the history pages. The Mysore Gazetteer authored by B. L. Rice states, that a Eurasian and Anglo-Indian association was formed in Mysore in 1879 aimed at improving the condition of families belonging to those communities. It approached the Mysore state for land and immediately the Maharaja of Mysore, Chamarajendra Odeyar, granted around 3,900 acres of land in Whitefield, Sosmund and Sriganda Kaval on April 1882 towards agricultural and industrial pursuits. Soon the agricultural lands were set up along with few houses in Whitefield. A unique village plan was executed comprising of two concentric circles, an inner circle, outer circle, Borwell Road and the village green right in the middle, the quintessential English village. There were about 18 houses on the circumference and the school, post office, playground and lawn tennis courts in the center of the circle. Outside the circle, there was a place for football and cricket ground. The other houses of about 20 were scattered throughout the settlement which is not less than 3 miles in length and about 2 miles wide and contained about 2000 acres of land for cultivation. This village was prettily laid out and its appearance was very striking as it was approached through a pass between Hamilton Hill on the left and Kaelin Hill on the right. This settlement was named after David Emanuel Stockenborough White who was the founder and the first president of the association. Mr. White envisioned Whitefield as an agricultural self-sustained community. Also, the settlers of Whitefield to work towards the common good without owning any property. So, that is how this region got its name as Whitefield. Whitefield soon became famous for its mangoes, other fruits and timber trees were also grown. No better roses and other flowers were to be found than those grown at Whitefield, which even commanded high prices at Madras and elsewhere. Several of the settlers worked at Kolar Goldfield while their families remained in the settlement. As it was not far away, they took a run into the place periodically via train. There were about three to four trains a day which left Whitefield Station to Bangalore, Madras and Jolarpet. Others used to earn by growing fruits, vegetables. The rearing of poultry and sheep farming ought to pay well. Supplies were in plentiful. Can you guess the population of Whitefield in 1907? A staggering 130. In 1965, it was between 1500 to 2000. Until 90s, this place was calm and peaceful and was also popular for Satya Sai Baba Ashram, which used to be flooded by devotees from western countries during the summer. After the appearance of International Tech Park in 1994, the original Whitefield started disappearing. The farms were replaced by hotels, the quaint little English houses gave ways to cafes, and the open fields were taken over by 
looming apartments and luxury villas. Gone are those days when Whitefield, infamously known as Farmers and Pensioners Paradise, it was once home to chirping birds, wildfowl, quail, jackals, and sparrows. One of the largest freshwater, Vartur Lake, has now turned into poison. Earlier, there was no scarcity of water. Today, borewells as deep as 1,200 feet have also failed to yield any water. Over the last two decades, Mr. White's Utopia, a self-sufficient village, has transformed into an upmarket suburb of the city with ill-planned development of residential projects Malls, IT hub has now grown leaps and bounds. There is possibly no replacement for the lush green forest, cultivation lands, crystal clear lakes, and the magnificent hills the region has lost. After all, development is inevitable, especially in a locality like Whitefield. So, should we be happy to just live with these memories, or should we make some efforts to retain its green heritage? answer is within you.